Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. It's Makari time. It's the new card of the week. We're going to take a look at the spotlight caches, what's in them, whether you should open. But before we do that, we, as always, give you a brand new deck for you to try. This one is a Cersei deck because, well, I think what KX4N did here was really, really cool. He took a look at the um, Deathbird decks, the Mockingbird Death decks, and said, the problem isn't Death Strike, it's Annihilus. Annihilus isn't really required here, even though it's a lot of power with Sentry in particular. It's not doing a whole ton otherwise. Death Strike, meanwhile, is eliminating opponent stuff, especially strong in a zoo meta where it can kill a blue marvel. And in addition to setting up all that, you've got um it can still get rid of your voids, your hoods, and so on. So in addition, you've also got Cersei, and then when you don't have that combo or when you want to do something else, you can just Cersei and make those cards bigger, which is also going to make Mockingbird cheaper. So Death Strike makes Death cheaper, Cersei makes Mockingbird cheaper, and this deck sort of comes together in a brand new way. This is like the only not on Isla Cersei deck I really, really like outside of that weird Owl God one. However, like huge caveat to that, this isn't an Annihilus deck. It's like a replacement to Annihilus. So super cool. Props to KX4N for this. And if you'd like to support KX4N for this, check out twitch.tv slash KX4N. He's a top, like, generally speaking, a top 100 to top, like, 20 player. Uh, you need X23 and Mockingbird for this list. Cersei or Deathstrike can be Annihilus without losing too very much here. And Nico can be Yandu. That's basically the changes. Nico is really, really great here, though. And there's a brand new Awesome Dan Hip. So... All right, turn one, I like Hood better than X-23 or Squirrel Girl as a general rule. Turn two, I usually prefer two ones to Mysterio. Mysterio can wait until turn three with an extra one, unless I've got that Mockingbird. I'm trying to get really cheap. So turn three is Mockingbird or Killmonger. Turn four is Sentry or Cheap Stuff plus Carnage. Turn five is my Cersei or Deathstrike turn. And then, if possible, turn six is Death and Mockingbird. And at that point, you just win. There is, again, a ton of power to this deck, right? You're dropping um, Death and Mockingbird for a massive amount of power. Cersei is very often, at least in my experience, leading to like 25, 30 point lanes, which is crazy strong. Um, you could even, honestly, drop a Cersei on a Death Strike with a cheap enough death. Like if you ended up going like Carnage, Killmonger, and Death Strike, and then you ended up going um, Cersei, uh, Cersei on Lady Death Strike and playing Death, that's a lot of power. There's so much power in this list. I strongly urge you to check it out. Uh, if you have the card Cersei or the card Annihilus, to be per perfectly honest. We had a fairly similar version to this in yesterday's video that was running, um, well, check yesterday's video if, you, if you're interested. Or you can check out the stream team, because this morning, Gregor2424 should have a video with yesterday's decks in it on his YouTube. So you can check that on his YouTube. Some point today, hopefully around 12 Eastern, Pershawn will be live with decks from this video, including that last one. All right. Let's talk Makari. Makari is a 3-4, Series 5, 6,000 tokens. After you, after your turn, run for your hand to a random location if possible. So your TLDR is, well, it's a free 4, but why would I want to do that? Well, that's like my basic idea here. Um, it's going to clog you in a meta that has a lot of clog. It's, but it is free power. So like there are some uses. We'll get to what those are in one second, but some of you decide what cards to buy based on what spotlight variants. And hey, for whatever reason, um, no offense to this artist who does very nice art. I like the base variants for um, the base art for Eternals better than the spotlight. So I've just been running those. We'll take a look at something else there too. We also have, as a train passes, sorry about that, a Hellfire Gala X23. So, um, very cool variant. I have the Dan Hip and two other spotlights, the one where she's jumping out the window with her arms up. Hey, arms up, that seems appropriate for me. And the, um, the I want to say, um, single claw. I don't know if it's Peach or Rian. It's getting stuck in my head, but that one. And then we have a reasonably cool Gladiator. Gladiator doesn't really have alternate costumes, so I don't feel the need to get a million Gladiator variants. So these variants are not like must grab for me, but these are very powerful cards that we'll talk about more later in the video. All right. Also in the shop tomorrow, not at the reset today, but at the reset tomorrow should be these four variants. They're called, um, I don't remember what they're called, casual variants. So I'm probably going to grab all four. Um, I'm less sold on Thena because I do have the spotlight for Sina, for, excuse me, Thena, but I'm going to grab all four. Um, I think they're cool enough to own and they're cute. And so I'm just going to buy them since they're up. Uh, but I don't know if you're interested. If you have any of these cards, you should probably have Gilgamesh at this point. He's in one of the top meta decks. Is Zoo the top meta deck? Top meta deck like Cam keeps claiming? Well, this 
uh, recording this Thursday for release on Saturday, we've got Den and the great J.J. Rolk doing the top 10 decks of Marvel Snap. So you can check out the podcast for our much longer form discussion where we actually discuss these decks against each other to figure out what the best is. All right, synergies for Bakari. First, four free stats, but it's at a totally random place. Uh, whenever you draw it, it will even toss itself into a place at the end of the last turn. Um, it can now run into a Professor X lane, and obviously it can do a Storm lane, but this is obviously hard to pull off. If there's any other space, it could run anywhere. There's not a ton of homes here, unless we're just underestimating her, although I was able to pull together either 9 or 10 decks that are reasonably different that you can try her out in. Surfer doesn't hate a free 4 to 7 stats. Um, the free 4 is nice if you surf for it, it's 6. If you surf for it and either uh, Okoye or Nova it, it's 7. Look, that's a lot of stats for free. That could be really good. Cerebro 4 wants this, but she makes your bad locations even worse. She runs into that location you were avoiding, and she can lose you the game. Uh, Moon Girl decks really like her. I think that's the real secret sauce for her. They like the idea of keeping the hand light to get what you want. So if she runs out of your hand, you're more likely to hit your like She-Hulk Abomination, whatever, with your Moon Girl. She's good for Pryo and bad for certain locations and clock decks. So she's not like useless, but she feels like a Series 3 card being released in Series 5. That's honestly what I think of her right now. All right. Let's do some decks. We're going to start, as always, with Doc D. Doc D is the king of new Marvel Snap content. One might even call him the Newberry. Right, Doc D? This is a very cool build. This is fundamentally um, saying if I can Moon Girl, Abomination, or She-Hulk, skip a turn for the She-Hulk if necessary, uh, I should be able to win that game. Makari, and I added Wasp. I usually don't change decks again from other people, but I cut Nebula for Wasp because Wasp also helps with that hand management thing. So I added Wasp. Um, you basically get Wasp out of your hand. You get um, Makari out of your hand, and then you should have a really good shot at the Abomination She-Hulk, while the Wasp also makes that Abomination just a little bit cheaper for when you get doubles of it. I think that this version of the deck should run really, really, really well, and I'm excited to give this a try. Um, this is, like, literally about it for Makari. I'll tell you, there's, like, three decks I like here. All right, we've got Teddy Ninja. Teddy Ninja never does new card videos, but Teddy Ninja is awesome, former Snap Judgments guest, and did a new card video that I thought was really cool. I came up with this very cool idea for Makari, where it's basically saying, well, if I can get Pryo, I should be able to win the game, right? Like, I'm just going to stay ahead, use Alive, Gamora, etc. to win the game. Um, it's running both Storm and Professor X. Um, I don't think this deck needs Makari. I think this is a cool deck, but I don't think it needs Makari. Next up, we have Ankh, who does a new card video every week. I gotta stop saying Ankh is new, because at this point, Ankh isn't new. Ankh has some really cool decks in uh, this video, but I think this one's kind of memed here. Uh, but it's so cool. It's everything that jumps out, Angel, M'Baku, Proxima, and Makari, and basically says, well, if I destroy stuff, I have get the free Angel. At the end of the game, I've got the free M'Baku where I can just use, or I can just eat that. Um, Makari pops in, great, no problem. Um, I can Modok at the end of the game with either Mockingbird or Death and get those out. And that seems like really cool. Is this going to win a lot of games? Honestly, I don't think so. But it is a very, very cool deck that I would really like to try out because, pff, like, welcome to the meme tier in Conquest, right? All right. It's Guest Gaming is back with a new card video. Guest still does these, but he releases them after I make mine, so I can't share his decks. Well, I guess I could message him in advance. I just actually need to remember to do that. Has a C4. C4 is obviously a good home. I think Sean is a little dangerous. There's only two, um, two cards that are one drops that will ruin your Cerebro. They are Martyr and Titania, and Titania might just go to the other side. Although I guess you could get hit with a um, Rocket too. Either way, this is still a really cool list. I think that this is, like, because of the claw and his Marvel, a really, really interesting way to go with the list. And then we have Obelisk. Our friend Obelisk is a smaller streamer that you should really check out. Very kind person. Has another version of the... See? Look, different version. Of C4. This one is probably a little safer, if a little drier. Like, right, the Angela here is spicy, so on and so forth. But this one should be very powerful. Um... I think this one is worth checking out as well, to be perfectly honest. Canadian Alfredo has another deck that I'm really excited to try. This one is Makari Hand Dump. This is another attempt at using Makari with um, Moon Girl. And this one is so clever because it can go, um, you don't have to do the She-Hulk thing, right? Like if you Moon Girl um, a Sage or a Wolfsbane or like a Havoc, 
Um, and then you just could not, or you can play Sarah if you've got Ravona to get them down to one cost, or you can pass the turn, or right, you can just drop a Havoc at one cost to at that turn or two cost on turn five and just say, okay, I've got a two cost Havoc um, and that's going to mess things up, but it's eight power and then I've got Sage and Wolfsbane to play on top of it. This is super cool. Like, super cool. This is um, the other one that I'm really, really, really excited to try. There's one more I like a lot. Spoiler, it's not Surfer. I don't think it's a Surfer card. All right, next up, we have Double Death Bird. This one is, I mean, not dissimilar to the deck we started with. I think there's almost no way Makari and Moon Girl are better here than the Lady Death Strike combo, which is why I'm not as excited about this, but this is from the Great Den, and this is at least pretty damn cool. So, again, like, if you like that first deck and you have access to these cards, then it's worth giving a try. Also, if you don't have Cersei, hey, here's another way to do it. All right, Makari Aggro. I have no idea who made this. I found this, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, this is, like, a super low to the ground, almost like Makari Noki. And I'm all about it. Like, you get the nine power strong guy, you get the free Proxima, you get the free Makari, you get to close locations, you get Goose with Goose, Storm, and Cosmo. Um, US Agent and Shadow King help ruin the opponents. I think this is really cool. There is definitely something to this. Um, is this good? I would be shocked. Is this cool? Hell yeah. So props to whoever came up with it. I have no idea who made this at the start of the month. Uh, again, it, it was on Snapzone and had no associated name. All right, we're on to the last two builds, which are mine. They're just various surfer lists. This is a Silver Sage surfer. I think Ravona with Ironheart, Sage, and Wolfsbane makes some sense. Makari works pretty well with Ironheart, Sage, and Wolfsbane. So that's what this list is, right? Um, Ironheart, excuse me, sorry, itch. Um, Ironheart gets an extra thing to hit. Sage and Wolfsbane get an extra card in the lane to trigger off of. Seems like it's probably decent. You've got Shaw here because you have both Ironheart and Surfer. Red Guardian gives you a little tech. This one seems cool. I threw it together. I think it's decent. The other one is, um, I mean, this one really wants magic over Nikia. I don't know why Nikia is here. But, like, I built this. Um, this was my first, very, very first Makari brew when the card was spoiled. But I think this is decent too, right? Like, it's just saying... Um, if I've got enough turns, I can use, I could just get enough cards on the board to like double Surfer Odin and win with Wong. And Shaw gives you an option to do that. I think that like Makar is, again, just a very solid card here. Is it great with Brood and Absorber Man? No, that's honestly my worry. I think the best Surfer decks run Brood and Absorber Man, and that is a concern. Again, I really like those two Moon Girl decks that we talked about, and I'm going to scroll back. They'll be in the description of this video. I'm going to scroll back just to give you a quick look at what they were. Uh... They are this Canadian Alfredo hand dump one, which I think is super duper cool. And then the um, very first one, the High Evolutionary one. And hey, quick note, the High Evolutionary one is basically free. Although, like, it remains to be seen if Makari takes this, honestly, tier two deck up to tier one. Cool. All right. Thoughts? It's free for power, but unless the Moon Girl stuff really works, no. Surfer could work, but it's going to be dangerous with the best Surfer decks, which run Brood and Absorb Man. And then the other best Surfer decks run Werewolf, which also does not give a shit about this card. So it's probably not a good card, but even so, we're going to wait until Friday, unless we absolutely need the other cards. So let's take a look at these other cards, starting with Gladiator. Gladiator is now a Series 4 card that goes for 3,000 tokens on reveal. Add a card from Pony's deck to their side of location. If it has less power, destroy it. So Gladiator was the best three in the game for quite a while. Um, but he got sort of power crept by both Red Guardian and Nocturne. If you have Red Guardian and Nocturne, I honestly do not believe you need Gladiator unless you really want to play Mill decks. He is a requirement for Mill decks, but he is just good in other decks, but largely very replaceable. He is, however, the most easy stats you can get from a 3 drop. All right, first we're going to look at Zun Sour Miracle. Uh, he's running Ronin over Claw at this point in this deck. The Claw was here for the Professor X meta. We shared this first. You've seen this deck elsewhere. Other people have done videos of this. I promise you we had it first because before he posted it, I asked Suns for the deck and he gave it to me. So um, this is a very cool list that Gladiator is very good in. Is he a requirement for this list? Honestly, I don't really think so. I think you're perfectly fine replacing him with any decent size threes. Um... Or even a card like White Widow without losing too very much here. But he is a very good on-tempo thing to do on turn three. But hey, the cool thing about this deck is, especially with Invisible Woman, basically all your threes are cool on-tempo on curve threes. So there is that to note. Um, all that said, really, really great list. This is one of the best lists in Marvel Snap, and Gladiator is in it. Gladiator is also in another of the best lists in Marvel Snap. This is a Silver Surfer list. Um... 
So the version that BBAK played that finished in second last season did not run Gladiator. It instead ran Cosmo. So, I mean, is Gladiator required here? No, but it is a valuable piece of one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. Again, paying attention to what the best decks are and that Gladiator has a home in them means that this is a card you can get, even if it is often replaceable in those lists. This is the list it is not replaceable in. If you'd like a full guide for this, check it yesterday. This is a mill deck. Mill decks need um, Cable, Zemo, Gladiator. They usually run Yondu, but not as much as people would have you believe. And this version of the deck is great. We have a version yesterday without Cannonball as well. If you're interested in that, we did a full deck guide for this. It was like the cover video of the day. Um, it's a great, great list. I don't know what to say about it, except it hit rank 65. It's severely underrated. No one's playing around it and no one expects it. If you play it, you can expect to win a lot of cubes. I genuinely think this is one of the best games, one of the best decks, and one of the best reasons to buy Gladiator. It's also relatively cheap because, again, there's a Cannonball free version. It runs like Absorb Man and Killmonger. Um, but as long as you have Zemo and Gladiator, you can run the list. All right, X-23 is the next list. X-23 is an absolute requirement for Destroy. So 1, 2, Series 5, 6,000 tokens. When this is discarded or destroyed, regenerated at a random location, plus 1 energy next turn. Cool. Sounds good to me. Um, this is not in many non-Destroy decks, but in every Destroy deck, it is a must. If you want to play Destroy, get this card. Can't be more clear than that, right? So this is our Bog Center Destroy. That Lady Death Strike can be Shang-Chi. It can be like six cards. It can be um, Arnim Zola. It can be freaking, I've seen a few Sabretooths lately. Whatever makes you happy for that Lady Death Strike, feel free. Lady Death Strike is particularly good right now because again, Zoo is all over the meta and killing a Blue Marvel is extraordinarily powerful. This is, again, uh, a requirement. You cannot play this without X-23. You cannot play this without Null. If you don't have, if you ha don't have Nico or Death Strike, you'll be fine. Next up, we have the Nimrod version. This version is significantly more expensive. It's very hard for me to imagine that you managed to get this far, getting cards like Grandmaster, excuse me, and Nimrod, uh, along with Nico, while not having X-23. But hey, if you don't, if X-23 is the one card missing, and this looks interesting, this is a super-duper fun list that is very worth checking out. And finally, we have the really cool Galactus list. This is the Reddit list that um, Regis Kilbin made famous, and then we made a video on it that did quite well. Um, this is like the jankiest thing in the world, but it actually works. It is stupidly fun to play. And as with all the X-23 decks that are destroy lists, X-23 is a requirement. Does X-23 fit into discard lists? Nope, not really. All right, so should you open this week? Gladiator is great, but Series 4 is so affordable and largely replaceable. Unless you want Mill, Gladiator is fine. X-23 is irreplaceable if you want to play destroy and don't have her. However, if you don't want to play destroy, feel free to skip her. I'd probably open if number two is the case. If you want to play Destroy and don't have X-23, I think it's worth just opening this week. And I'd skip if I'm only missing Gladiator unless I'm dying to play Mill. If both Gladiator and X-23 are missing, it's easy open. If you can get that, um, if you've got four caches and you can get that um, 9,000 token value on two cards that are very playable, assuming you have interest in playing them, you should open. I am not sold at all on Makari. And if you can hoard this week, it seems like a good time to do so. Quick reminders, in Thursday's video, tomorrow we let the card settle. We need to see where the card is and wait, let the meta decide what it's going to do. So on Thursday, I ask a bunch of top players, and I mean like top of the world players. We're talking our Lambies, we're talking our Sizers, we're talking our .geos, we're talking our Zuns, we're talking our um, BBAKs. I ask them, what's your first impression of Macari? And then I share that with you. Friday, I synthesized that for a weekend mission um, piece of advice. And then by Monday, I've, we've got weekend missions um, stats, and I've checked like all the stats. I've checked all the stats websites. I've got a good idea, and I give you a last chance review. Yesterday, we did a last chance review of Cersei. If you're watching this in the morning, and that's still valid to you, please check it out. Always, always, always for the new card, unless you are the type of person who gets every card, a content creator like myself, wait until Friday. Friday is when weekend missions happen. There's no downside to just waiting until Friday to see if this card is worth it. Perhaps we're all wrong and it's completely incredible. We will not know immediately, but by Friday we will. So please stay tuned until Friday for that bit of advice. Wishes of the day, then we're out of here. All right, first, before we get to the actual wishes of the day, a few people were like, yo, where are the bundle reviews? All right. It's the last two and a half weeks of my school year, and I'm like drowning. I'm making this video um, 
I'm making every video like right before I make it as fast as I can because I've got an insane amount of work for the, I'm a teacher for anyone who's like brand new here. I'm doing my very, very best to get caught up and keep, make sure the daily videos come out. But like the articles, I write articles on Marvel Snap Zone and the uh, shorts that have bundle guides are just gonna have to wait until like the middle of next week. I am really sorry. Um, it doesn't happen. Those of you who've been here long enough know that kind of thing does not happen regularly to me and it won't happen regularly again. All right, Anthony Garces as a fancy pick card to return to when it was originally dropped, what would it be? And like, longtime viewers are all yelling at the screen because they know what I'm going to say. It's Beast. Beast is a 2-2 with its previous ability of keeping the card zero for the rest of the game. Was my favorite card basically ever in Marvel Snap, and I would kill to have it back. My second choice, just to not be obvious, is Quinjet. Quinjet reducing stones to zero, especially with new Thanos, would be really cool. I think Quinjet um, working better with various Moon Girl things is, was always cool as well. Two Ties wants me to teach him Bounce, and, um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Over the summer, I ain't streaming, but in the description to this video is the Snap Judgments League Discord. Over the summer, I'm going to stream some Bounce, and I'm going to teach some Bounce. So if you're interested in learning Bounce from, and I don't think I'm a Bounce Master, I think I'm very good with Bounce. It's probably one of my top five decks. Um, I'm, my best decks are always mid-rangey, dark hockey stuff, though. Uh, that kind of disruption really works for me. I just like Bounce more. Uh, but I will happily teach Bounce to anyone who wants over the summer on the Snap Judgments League Discord. Maybe I'll even, like, like uh, bully one of my streamer friends into letting me on their stream, and we can do it that way. So if you're one of my streamer friends and you're interested in that, shoot me a DM. Cool? Oleg Ulst asks what will happen when we reach a critical mass of cards. I mean, they'll do rotation. They'll take some cards out of the pool, and then we'll just continue on. This has happened in lots of other games. Um, I'd like it noted, we are nowhere close to that right now. That is a thing that happens when we're, like, thousands of cards in, and Marvel Snap is still a relatively small game. The King of Questions, Keratix Lee, asks how draft will succeed given the length of draft rounds. Given that people didn't want to play Conquest for that long, how will draft work? So um, Magic Arena already solved for this, where you have to sort of sit through the draft live, uh, but once you're done with the draft, you can just sort of play against other draft decks. You get, um, I don't know, like seven games to get five wins. Um, just do that, right? Like there's a draft queue. Once, you're, once you've drafted, like drafting, you're going to have to sit there for 15, 20 minutes, right? But once you're done drafting, you just get put into the draft queue and you have the weeks uh, until you play. You don't have to play with your specific pod, which I think is probably fine. Probably going to work just fine, to be clear. All right. If you're interested in checking out our Patreon, check out patreon.com slash snapjudgments, where we offer all sorts of exclusive content, including the ability to have your name said at the end of every video. So I'd like to say thank you to the OG Abigail Glee. Abigail Gieslin, excuse me, Mandatory Burnout, Mr. Burnout, Gables, Irregardless, David G. Wingfield, the one and only Dire Wolf, Always Kind, L.A.B., Fa Thor Newman, check him out on YouTube, Good Dog Gamer, Great Dex, Great Person, This Is The Way, all the way from Scotland, Ink, not Pencil, Ink, I Am Frostman, yes you are, damn it, Jay Never Eats, New Friend Alert, Hollowed, thank you so much. If that's not the name you'd want, shoot me a DM either on Discord or uh, Patreon, and we'll fix that. But Hollowed is what the name I got, so Hollowed is the name I went with. The King of Questions, Caretex Lee, Corey, all the way from Japan. Pyro, hey Pyro for us. The Goat Seeker, hey Goat. Den Man Falcon, thank you for the happy Father's Day, my friend. Happy, uh, hope you had a wonderful day as well. New Card King, Docty, Fat Nick, Doku, Ginger Prime. Philip Rakovich, a.k.a. Ratko, Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, The Rob Silverman, another OG, Old Dirty the Beza, X-Force V and Skippy G, our rhyming friends, Tommy Nyquist, who won Snap Judgments League Season 1, The King of Bros, bruh, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Woody, Gepsi Hoda, Luna Chris, Louis Antunes, Mod Supreme Models, the one and only Darth Tater. That's who the one and only is. Sorry, I used that for someone else. That's your appellate. Remy Satala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, another new friend, Jason B. AJ, the Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrumix, Ooh. Matt H., DJ Mikey Hijinks, No Frickin' Flex, Ocularis, Mr. Craig Sterry, Pretty Damn Chill, Seamus. You all caught up? I haven't heard from you in a couple days, Seamus. 
Jonesy, two ties, who's literally just like going to break uh, the big dumb idiots list and send them to us. I'm really excited for this. The Pirate King Tucker, who this week is streaming his Snap Judgments League games on Thursday, not Friday, not Snap Judgments League, his Snap Judgments videos games on Thursday, not Friday, so make sure you check that out. The Homie Min, love you, Min, hope you're doing great. And of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for, I have something special for you tomorrow. I'm not spoiling it, but tomorrow we're doing that giveaway because there's a deck you gotta see to believe. Can't believe how much success I'm having with this deck, how much I love it. Check it out. We'll share that with you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that sub button, ring that bell. Peace.